Yeah, I did a lot of walking when I was in Alaska. I also did a lot of bicycle riding and uh, hitchhiking. So uh, most of the people just kept driving by, though. But uh, I got—I had a few uh, sensitive com- and compassionate souls that pulled over and picked me up. And some would drive me only a few miles. Others would drive me 10 or 20 or 30 miles. And uh, some even drove me uh, much further than that, like, uh, like a, a hundred, two, three hundred 300 miles. Got me at least a quarter to halfway to where I wanted to go. And uh, so it was kind of nice. So I was able, people were still uh, not hesitant to picking up uh, hitchhikers up there in Alaska. That's what I did when I was in Alaska. I spent a great deal of my time hitchhiking. I walked a lot, I ran a lot, I sprinted a lot, I rode my bicycle a lot, and uh, took the uh, 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 shuttle from Anchorage all the way down to Homer, Alaska, and from Homer back to Anchorage. And when I was in Anchorage, I took the metro, the metro link buses all around the city. And I walked a lot in the snow, even in the snow, like uh, five, three to five feet thick of snow. Of course, they clear the streets with their snow plows and they shovel the, the sidewalks with their shovel, snow shovels. But yeah, so I had my snow boots on, I had gloves, I was well insulated. I kept warm, drank a lot of coffee. Yeah, I went up to uh, I went up to Homer, Alaska. I went up there in two thousand. Uh, what was it? Two thousand twelve. Was two thousand twelve and thirteen, and then and fourteen. Then I came uh, for two or three trips. Then I came back. Uh, you know, each year after the fishing season because I, I went up there to get on these fishing boats and to work in these uh, on these these in these uh, fish fishing processor plants uh, processing seafood from the, the, the boats that the fishing boats would, would bring us and I worked in Kodiak Alaska some on some fishing boats and some uh, processing plants land base and out in the ocean Bering Sea and I also did a few trips up in Naknek, Alaska, Bristol Bay, for the salmon fishery, and uh, and uh, I did some fishing out of Homer. Worked at some uh, seafood processing plants. Worked on the dock, offloading uh, fishing boats and processing the fish and packing the fish and putting the containers of fish in the trailers so they could be hauled out up to the uh, the Kenai Peninsula to some of their uh, warehouses where they stored it. And uh, I was staying in a tent for a while. Then I bought a little cheap camp camper from one of the workers that I worked with. Stayed in that for a little while. Then uh, I also stayed and in, in, uh, paid $800 a month for a... Uh, because it was off season, so they gave me a great deal for a monthly rent of only eight hundred dollars during the winter. So my son and I, because he came up to visit me for about a year, his mom insisted, and uh, we stayed in some. We stayed in a, a fishing lodge, right on the right on the lake. It was beautiful. It was in Homer, and uh, I worked uh, various jobs. I worked at a restaurant, and I worked at. Uh, different canneries to keep me busy and keep money coming in. Uh, but it was a good experience. It was super cold during the winter, below zero. So we had to dress up and we had to purchase portable heaters and uh, propane heaters and, uh, and electric heaters. And I had plans on uh, making, putting solar, pa- portable solar panels uh, in where I was at and so I could uh, power up off the grid never happened but uh, that was what I was going to do if I was going to stay up there but 
at least uh, be faithful in going up there uh, once a, once a year for for the for the fishery. Yeah, my son, my my uh, youngest son, he was up there with me for a year, and uh, he went to Homer Homer uh, Middle School there, and for a year, and uh, and uh, plus uh, while I was uh, working in town, I couldn't obviously get on a fishing boat while he was with me. But uh, after a year, he went back to be with his mom, and I stayed up there to get on a fishing boat. And that's what I did. I got on a fishing boat and. Uh, fished for salmon up in the up in the bay that was quite of an experience there uh actually no no i'm sorry uh yeah i did fish for sam I, I actually was tendering after i sent him back home to be with his mom i got on a i got on a boat a crab boat that was tendering for up and up in prince william sound and up in uh Naknik and ugashik and all those areas up there uh, and we were tendering for salmon. Where that's where the gill netters uh, bring their their fish loads to us, and we offload it and put it in our live tanks in our uh, refrigerated salt water tanks RSW. And then once we're full, we we bring it back to the canneries in town, and we uh, they hook us up with these big hoses, and they suck all the fish out of the tanks. And then we got to clean it up, and then go back out and anchor anchor in the bay and. And they continue bringing their fish to us, so we load it up, and we weigh their fish, and we give them their tickets, their their receipts of how much fish they delivered, and and uh, that's what we did. I did that for about a month and a half. It was interesting. It was uh, uh, it was the uh, uh, what boat was it? It was the uh, something Marie. It was a cool boat. The skipper was cool. All the crew was cool, and uh, it was definitely a learning experience because I'd never worked on a, ten a tender before. Uh, I've I've delivered the tenders when I was on uh, gill netters, but uh, and uh, gill netters and purse saners, but I had never worked on a tender, so it was a good experience. I learned how to operate all these uh, suction tubes and these how to sort fish and. And then we we did some uh, maintenance stuff. I helped drive the boat when the skipper was sleeping, and came up against a big wave. Man, I had to back off. I had to back off on the throttle because it was like about a twenty footer. It was, it was, we were head, I don't know where we were going. I think we we're heading to Prince William Sound from uh, from Kodiak. But yeah, it was, it was a good experience. I also did some engine room work. I learned how to. Uh, Take the clipboard and record, take measurements of the, the engine uh, and the oil levels and the fuel levels and filter, oil filters and all that stuff. I helped do the, I helped do the fuel. We uh, took on fuel. I helped that through that process. Uh, we had to all watch the vents so we didn't overflow. But I, we overflowed a little. It was kind of scary because I'd never done it before. But it was definitely a learning experience. Yeah, when my son came up to visit me uh, back in, I think it was, uh, what year was it? 2013, 2014, something like that. Uh, he uh, came up on his mom's wishes. His mom wanted him to be with me. He said, oh, I'm sending my, I'm sending son up to you. I said, well, I'm getting on a fishing boat. I'm going to be out at sea fishing for fish. He said, nope, he's coming up to be with you, so... I had to change my plans, work on the land-based operations, processing fish in the canneries on land, and offloading fish, and that's what I did while the son was with me. It's a good experience for him. He got, a, he got to experience a really cold weather and a lot of snow, and he was able to watch me uh, work at some of these canneries. He came down to the fishing docks and would hang out and we'd, we'd be in these tents right there along the beach where we paid like uh, it was only eight dollars during the winter to camp at these sites along the beach on the Homer spit and, and up in the mountains a little we camped at these places where uh, it was only eight dollars a night so it wasn't a whole lot set up our tent we had to bundle up warm with a lot of blankets and we were able to do it
and we cooked our food at the, on the picnic tables with our gas stoves and it was pretty cool it, there was a lot of thrift stores there so we were to pick up we were able to pick up the supplies we needed and the clothes that we that we ended up uh, using to keep us warm and we so we dressed appropriately and uh, we were well nourished we were per we were able to purchase food from the grocery stores and all that so bare necessities rice beans and a lot of a lot of dry goods canned goods powdered milk and uh, juice and a lot of water but yeah uh, so first when he first came up he was he was I picked him up at anchor I went I uh, I hitchhiked up there and I brought my bicycle and I picked up my son from the airport and uh, he was happy to see me but uh, he kept asking me where are we staying dad are we staying in a nice hotel are we staying in, are we staying in a lodge or a house or a beach house I didn't answer him at first but uh, he found out after we after we took the uh, the, the I, uh, uh, it's, it's a van that they uh, that they offer rides on. It's like a hundred. It's only a hundred dollars one way from Anchorage to Alaska. It's pretty cheap, pretty reasonable. It was a hundred dollars for each of us. We were able to load. I was able to. We were able to load our stuff in their little trailer. It was a it was a passenger van, and uh, they brought us down to Homer. But uh, when we got there, he found out that we were just going to be camping in a tent for a while. So he wasn't too thrilled about it. Some very, it was before the snow. It was before the snow. It rained a lot, so we had to. But he, uh, there was a lot of things in town to do. I mean, there was a lot of places to go, and a lot of places, a lot of churches, a lot of uh, different uh, activities. So he wasn't uh, bored, or he wasn't. Uh, he was able to be busy and preoccupied. You know, we weren't just uh, hanging out outside, you know, at the beach all, all the time. But uh, that's where we slept. In fact, uh, I believe it was 2015, and it may have been after I sent, I don't know if it was the next, after I came back and went back up, I believe I came back home after being up there after sun, after I sent sun back home first. I think I followed like about six or seven, about five months after I sent him back, I came home on a plane, but then I went back up. Because I got a job at Westward Seafoods, which is a, which is in in a Dutch Harbor. So, uh, and I spent uh, years in Dutch Harbor when I was younger, as a teenager in the early twenties. I used to fly on. I used to fly me up, uh, or even take the boat across uh, the fishing boat that I worked on. We took it across the Gulf of Alaska, all the way from uh, Lake Union in Seattle. Went through the fishing docks there and Ballard and the Ballard Locks, and then went across Puget Sound up into the uh, Canadian waters, and then went straight across the Gulf, all the way to Dutch Harbor. It took us five, five, six days, depending on the weather. And sometimes we would travel up the inside, what is called the Inside Passage, all the tributary islands, you know, right there in Juneau and St. Petersburg and Sitka and Rupert and traveled along the whole route down that whole panhandle if you will and down through uh the i you know next to the kodiak islands and then down the uh the uh aleutian chain the peninsula and then the aleutian chains the island series of islands they called the aleutians until we reached dutch harbor about halfway down and uh so i worked there at the at a seafood a, a big company seafood processing plant we processed co a lot of cod a lot of pollock uh, even herring and uh, whatever else uh, rock cod and flatfish uh, some halibut some uh, arrowhead some uh, arrow tooth some uh, greenland turbot some uh, a low oh snapper some some uh, idiot fish it's called idiot fish it's really dark red it's like a, it's like a bullhead fish and uh, all kinds of, of different species of fish, even mackerel, which is kind of like a, looks like kind of a perch, but it's a sandy skin. It's kind of yellow and gray and blue striped. But yeah, we fished, we uh, processed that fish. And I used to fish out there on the boats. We used to catch it ourselves. Uh, 
when I uh, and we went out deep into the water and caught all kinds of fish. I worked on the smaller boats and I worked on the bigger boats. Did that since I was uh, since I was uh, 19 years old. So it's a good experience, but uh, I ended up going back there years later and uh, just to revisit it. And uh, on my time off when we were up there in Dutch Harbor, I was able to go to the library and and then go to the gym and do some swimming in their pool and do some workouts in there. And it was cool. It's a little cool town there, up there in the Alieska. There's a place called Alieska and. Uh, and then you got Dutch Harbor Sun.